Kids are people and parents should not be living through them or emotionally relying on their children. I don't get why that's so hard to understand. My name is Dakota Sage, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about parents using their children to address their own emotional needs. I wanted to bring this up first because the world has become a very child unfriendly place. Gen Alpha is obviously struggling right now and they're growing up in a world that's becoming increasingly unkind to kids. Even kids that are well behaved are called things like crotch goblins, which really bothers me because children are people. They're gonna be immature, they're gonna be annoying, but you still have to respect that they are people. A lot of parents don't even see their children as people. They wanna tell them what, how, and when to do things. Now, I'm not my parents' first cadet, I don't listen to everything they say, but my family has always been pretty good at differentiating when we're having a conversation and when their word is just law. And even though my parents were telling me what to do or controlling me to an extent, they always respected me as a person. This is not the same for everyone else. Some parents tell their kids what to do solely for the satisfaction that they will listen to them. These parents want a person that will ask no questions and have no comments. An example of this is the TV show Toddlers and Tiaras. Toddlers and Tiaras is exactly what it sounds like. A bunch of mothers using their daughters as dress-up dolls and parading them around a stage for money. Lots of kids like to dress up or wear makeup, but I don't think any of these children in the show actually enjoyed being in the pageants. These little girls would have meltdown tantrums, probably because they're being choked by hairspray, and their mothers would just like give them candy and force them out on stage. There's two main reasons why children have tantrums. One, they just have big emotions and they don't really know how to express them, so it bursts out with tears and yelling. The other reason is that by making a scene, they know that you're gonna give them attention or sweets or anything just to get them to stop. Hello? <laughs> And when the parents don't see their children as people, they don't really care about the actual emotions. They'll just do anything to get the kid to shut up. We all know the infamous, I'm not giving up my dream, dad, I'm giving up yours. But I don't think people realize how many are actually affected by dynamics like these. Some of these are very innocent, like my mom always wanted to be a dancer, so when my sister and I came around, she signed us up for classes. Other times, it's like, really creepy. TLC's show Smothered features pairs of mothers and daughters that are a little too close. They dress the same, they follow each other around all day, and I think one of the pairs was actually taking showers together. These daughters will literally never be able to live a normal life with their mothers on their backs like this. And it's just gonna end up with crazy psychological damage in their future. Those are extreme cases, but we also see a lot of pressure on kids who play sports, whose parents never made it to the level that they wanted to. My dad was a big baseball player, I was a big softball player, and that was something that we used to do together a lot but he never pushed me to the point of exhaustion. But a lot of kids, especially ones that had a lot of initial talent, get burnt out by their parents. I've watched a lot of athletes lose all love for their sport because it just wasn't fun anymore. I've watched pitchers be reprimanded for letting up a double in a game where we were up by 10 runs and shortstops be yelled at for not executing a double play at 12 years old. And I know so many people that went to college to play a sport and then quit after a few weeks. Like they hit the milestone that their parents wanted them to and then they were just done. Putting this kind of pressure on your children is always gonna make them feel like they're not enough, ultimately driving them away in the end. Your kids are not your friends. The parents' emotional needs are gonna be too much for the child to take on because of the maturity difference. Plain and simple. It's great to be close with your children, but a line has to be drawn somewhere. A lot of times, these children are exposed to their parents' economic, social, or even sexual problems because the parents are relying on them for emotional support. You see a lot of this with children of divorce whose parents are trying to force them to pick a side by either airing out their spouse's dirty laundry or just lying completely. Similarly, having a child is not going to fix a relationship. When struggling with a partner, having a baby is just gonna strain the relationship more, most likely ruining it altogether. On top of that, these kids often carry the blame for the destruction of the relationship leading the parents to resent the child. Another time when kids are often burdened with excess emotional caretaking is when they're the oldest of multiple siblings. 
Specifically, eldest daughter syndrome is a term used to describe when oldest daughters usually take on adult responsibilities in place of their parents. Because these girls are usually helping take care of their younger siblings, they have to bear the brunt of those children's emotional needs even though they're still children themselves. They tend to end up as people pleasers and fiercely independent because they don't want to burden others with their emotional needs. Another thing that has come out recently is the infamous TikTok boy mom. These women need to get whacked upside the head because what the fuck? Some of these TikTok boy moms are just people that value men more than women. But many others are using their sons as replacement husbands. I didn't even know what true love was until my precious son was born. I always joke that if I wasn't his mama bear, we would definitely be married. I mean, I truly believe that he's my soulmate. They think that they will dote on these boys and not only get unconditional love in return, but be the only woman that these boys are ever close to. Weird. Then, when the dreaded daughter-in-law appears, the mother realizes that she is no longer the most important woman and lashes out. Your son's a grown-ass man, when are you gonna let him start dating? Never! And I've explained to you guys so many times, he already has a great female in his life, which is me, he doesn't need anybody else. These boy moms are also known to excuse or ignore any bad things that their sons have ever done, because their perfect little boy would never do anything like that. And when these boy moms are single parents, they often expect their sons to be the man of the house, protecting and providing for them instead of the other way around. What's sad is you judgmental nobodies harassing me on the internet, okay? If you're jealous of the relationship that I have with my son, just say so. Sigmund Freud was a coked out creepy bastard, and I hate that there's people out here proving him right. It's important to be there for your children, but I do think you need to be there from a distance. Love and protect them, but still let them figure things out for themselves. And to any of the children who went through these experiences, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken, and you still have so much more potential beyond the role that you were forced to play as a child. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great rest of your day.